Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to do a demo on Cloud Endpoints. Now this is going to be following one of the quick start guides posted on Google's main page. So not a code lab, just basically going through documentation, doing some basic things. We'll be using the ESP v2 API, which is kind of their interface over like an open API type spec. And we are also going to be downloading and installing G Cloud to be run locally. So that's basically the cloud SDK. So there's gonna be a lot of little jump cuts in this video as I wait for things to download and build, but I wanna show you all of the fun steps that we have to go through. Now, first things first, we have to get the cloud SDK up and running on our local machines. Um, we also need Python. I already have Python installed. So if I do Python and type dash V, oops. Python dash dash version. I got 3.8.0. Nobody could see that, so <laughs> fun stuff. Basically, just make sure that you have the correct version of Python that is specified. I will be doing this in the Windows subsystem for Linux, so I will be following the Linux instructions, but they also have Windows instructions for using, say, PowerShell or whatever your particular flavor of um, interfaces. So basically we are going to go ahead and do this and we need the Ubuntu instructions because that's what I am using. So this is the new Windows, shiny Windows terminal. Um, and I, let's see, I was initially going to build this from scratch, but I would much rather install it through apt because then I can uninstall it later works for me. So let's go ahead and get the key from Google. I know I can just click the copy button, but we now have the key. We also need transport HTTPS certificates, which uh, sometimes it doesn't work very well in the subsystem for Linux, but we will see. So while that is fetching, we also are going to need the public key for Google so that we can pull down this repo. And this is pretty standard for downloading um, non-repository packages. We've got their key. Now all we should have to do is update and install the Google Cloud SDK. So apt update. This might take a minute depending on how up-to-date my system is. Basically, if you've never done this before, we're just making sure all of our local packages are up to date. And with the new key, we now have a new repository to pull from. It didn't take nearly as long as I thought. Now we need the Google Cloud SDK. So I'm gonna go sudo apt, ins, apt, 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 apt install Google Cloud SDK. If you just try and do this without adding that extra repository, this won't work, by the way. So we should have that. And we can try out gcloud init after this is done. So we'll try that. So what I'm going to do is I'll put this link in the description for this video. Oops, going to the wrong place here. And what we will also do is I'll have the link as well for the other thing other thing being the uh, documentation. But we can kind of take a quick peek at this while we go. So I'm following this quick starts guide, basically. The, the nice thing here too, is that not only are we playing around with endpoints, but we are also gonna work with the Cloud SDK locally, which is not something that I have too much experience with myself. I do my Google Cloud interactions mainly in Cloud Shell, which we could do that you know, all of this in Cloud Shell as well. But this is kind of nice to um, try and get things going. So this will take a moment. So I will be back in a few. And we're back. That took like 10 minutes. <laughs> Very long for a, uh, a an application to install. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and log in, basically make sure that G Cloud works locally. Now, one of the things that we would have to do is authenticate ourselves with Google Cloud. And in order to do that, we need to log in. So what it's going to do 
is give us a link to visit and it automatically popped something up, up for me on screen over here. And I'm going to allow Cloud SDK to work with my account. All right, and now I have to basically pick the project that I want to use. And I called this one, let's see, list. It was Frederick's dash. It's not here. What do we call this thing? Uh, Frederick's dash 680 dash endpoints. Uh huh. Intriguing. Oh, it'd be under F. Frederick's dash 680. Okay, there it is. Okay. Enter numeric chess or text value. Frederick's dash 680 dash endpoints. Oh, we have a auto-generated ID. Okay, why jigsaw? There it is, 141. I, I don't understand the reasoning why sometimes the IDs will follow along with the name of it, and then sometimes they won't. So right now we have a default configuration. Once I delete my project after we're done here, I will have to redo this aspect. But currently, my terminal session is basically authenticated with Google, so that is good. Now, what I'm going to do here is I am going to walk you through this lab. So we have gcloud installed. That's one of the prereqs. Um, it was new to my system, so it was kind of nice to walk through with you. Now, what this lab is going to be doing is to work with cloud functions and cloud run, which we're going to put an ESP v2 interface on. And this is going to be our endpoint. And if you remember from the blog or the prior videos, endpoints is basically our way of interacting with cloud services through an API. Amazon and Microsoft have their own names for this. Uh, endpoints is Google's. So if you are coming at this from an older version, there was an ESP v1. I'm just going to start fresh with ESP v2 so we don't have to worry about upgrading. So what we're going to do in this lab, we're going to create a project, which we did. We have done cloud functions before. We need to reserve a cloud run host name. We need an open API document. Um, and then we're going to basically spin up a Docker image and let that thing run. So first things first, we have done all of this already. We installed the cloud SDK. I have now figured out what my project ID is. It's not what I thought it would be. The next step we have to do is to actually go ahead and reserve a host name. So this is required for Cloud Run. And what we're going to do here, let me move you to this side and you to this side. We're going to do this through the terminal, which I'm excited about. gcloud auth login, which we should already be set. Yeah, I already have that going. You're currently logged in. Current project is wide jigsaw. Let's set our region. So we're going to use central one, just to follow along here. Config, set to run, region, central one. Good, good, good. And now we're going to pull down this particular demo. Now, if you, I'm pretty sure at this point we haven't talked about cloud build and cloud run. Again, slightly recording out of order some of these videos. But this gcr.io is basically the repository where we can pull pre-baked or uploaded by ourselves applications that have been built in our in-cloud run. So we want to call this service, let's call it endpoints demo. So gcloud run deploy CIS 680 endpoints demo, all caps. It's probably not going to like that, but we'll try it anyway. Image equals gcr.io slash cloud run slash hello. So we're getting a hello world application. Allow anybody to call this. It's a managed platform and project is our ESP project ID, which in this case is just our Google Cloud project ID. So wide jigsaw 07 17. 
So you run that. Error. Yeah, okay. I wondered. They don't tend to like uppercase names here. So CIS 680 endpoints demo. API run. I thought I enabled this already. Would you like to enable this and retry? Sure. So we need to enable Cloud Run. I could have sworn that I did this while I was waiting for Ubuntu to install, but hey, things change. Cloud Run. Okay, well, let's go into the APIs then. These, that must, okay, the service must be enabled, the API must not be enabled. That's probably what's going on here. Cloud run. Enable. There we go. I do like that they disable all the APIs by default, just so that you don't get accidentally stuck with charges that you shouldn't have. Okay, so that is up and running. Let's hit Y to retry. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and deploy this project. We should see a successful deployment message. Now we are going to need some variables out of this, so I'm going to store it off to uh, a notepad entry here. Basically, we need the URL, we need the host name, um, and the service name. This is going to go into our Open API spec so that we know how to talk to it. Hope it makes sense. And once this gets deployed, it can take a few minutes. Uh, I will see you then. And we're back. So we have deployed successfully. So we see our service has been deployed. So let's go ahead and pull down what we need. So this is the service name. I should just make a note of that because I will forget that that's what I typed in earlier. So we need the name. We also need the cloud run host name, which is going to be too many windows open. That's a revision name. Does that copy and paste in the new notepad or in the new terminal? It does. Okay. So this is host name. And we also need the run host name. Oh, that's the service name. My bad. This is why we write these things down. And then the run host name. It's going to be here. All right, so we need that. Now, I have just a little temporary folder that I've created on my computer. So let's call this open API functions.yaml. And we've got a lot of text in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it. Um, and because I don't have my local Vim configured very nicely, I'm going to drop into nano, copy and paste this, paste it in, save it, open it up in Vim. There we go. spelling. The uh, only reason why I did all that funness is that when I paste into Vim in my terminal, it auto tabs. So copying and pasting from the internet does not look very nice. Okay, so we have some things to fill in here. So our host is going to be this guy right here. Let's go ahead and dump that in. All right, our service name we are going to put in region functions project ID. Right. So interesting. <laughs> um, I think I forgot to 